2024 and 2025 are looking to be big years for crypto, with the Bitcoin halving coming soon and also this big change to all banks in November 2025, where all banks must move over to ISO 2022. But is ISO 2022 overhyped? In the last video, we learned that cryptos are not inherently ISO compliant. It even says it on the ISO website. We also learned that ISO compliance is provided by approved technology providers. Based on these providers, we created this list where cryptos near the top have more partnerships with these providers. But why would a bank choose to move over to a crypto based solution? So in this video, we'll answer that question. To do this, we'll look at three different problems. First is what problems do the banks actually have? Second is crypto the real solution to these problems? And the third is which cryptos are best positioned to solve these problems? So what problems do the banks have? Global inflation is expected to drop, but interest rates are expected to remain higher for longer. But nobody has a crystal ball. Now this is the first problem the banks have. Uncertainty. Since the rise of interest rates, banks have posted their best profits in years. But uncertainty means planning is hard. If interest rates fall, then all those profits and the business models that worked in the past few years could be just washed out. We then also have Basel III Endgame, which squeezes costs and margins more, and for more banks. This all means that banks have to look harder at their business models and prepare for both scenarios, one where interest rates are high and one where interest rates are low. But what can banks really do with their business models? This brings us to the next problem. Now, for a long time, there has been this trend of clients moving their money out of banks into different vehicles where they can invest. This all started happening since around the great financial crisis, and it is purely because clients want to look for better returns for their money. And because banks were more restricted after the great financial crisis, returns for parking your money in banks were, of course, lower. Furthermore, technology has made it even harder for banks to compete. Consumers today are digital first and more tech savvy. They're willing to change platforms in search of better experiences and, of course, better returns. One example I can give is Monzo and HSBC. I personally use Monzo and the Monzo app is just a way better experience than the HSBC banking app. So technology is just making it easier for new players to come in and compete with the big banks. We can see evidence for this across the board. To top this all off, traditional banking business, i.e. lending money, is capital intense. However, we can see here that less capital intense businesses are far more profitable. For example, transactions and wealth distribution consists of only 30% of the overall capital but provide almost 50% of the profits. So what does this all mean? Well, regardless of what happens with interest rates, banks simply need to undergo massive technological transformation. Technological transformation is a major theme, and we can see here that banks that have performed better spend more on technology. But is crypto part of this transformation? Where does crypto fit in? Well, let's look at what McKinsey says here. So in general, banks need to use technology to improve services and cost efficiency. They need to also reduce their risks across the board. There is, of course, AI, but it seems here the pivotal deciding factor is the transaction business. The transaction business is just more capital efficient with the best growth outlook currently. So banks either need to level up their transaction game or just exit the market completely. So can banks use crypto to level up their transaction game? I think the answer is yes. According to Boston Consulting Group here, blockchain tech, specifically permission-based models, are able to reduce 80% of operational costs compared to traditional transaction systems. So we know the problem banks are having. We know that digital transformation and ISO compliance is pretty much going to be a given here. So we can see that the fulcrum is actually the transaction business. So let's take a look at which cryptos we surfaced earlier in the past video 
are more likely to be implemented to solve problems within the transaction business. So from the last video, we have our list here of cryptos which are partnered with various ISO compliant payment software service providers. From the BCG article, we know that permission-based solutions are more suitable for banks. So let's go ahead and just filter out any non-permission-based solutions. We also have access to SWIFT market distribution data. So this is the distribution of SWIFT FIN messages within the various categories of business that they do, published in January 2023. We can see here that payment-related transactions constitute 44.4% of average SWIFT daily messages, securities-related transactions at 50.8%, trade finance-related transactions at 0.3%, and treasury-related at 4.4%. So let's filter this list further by also focusing on SWIFT related interbank transactions and organizing by market distribution. So we can see here a couple cryptos remain. Let's go through this list and I'll explain why each of them are on here, what the market distribution means and who are their core ISO compliant implementation partners. It's important to know who their partners are because Due to the specialized nature of blockchain technology and payment technology in general, it is likely that banks would not have the sufficient in-house expertise to actually implement these themselves. So they work with partners to implement them. So first off, let's go through the payments market. First off, we have XRP, XDC, and HBAR. First, we have XRP here. XRP doesn't need any explanation. It is designed specifically for payments and is already being used as a complementary payment network to SWIFT via Ripple. And we can see here Ripple has a bunch of different partners. Ripple is also one of the only chain companies which is actually registered on the ISO 20022 website as an official member that steers the creation of ISO standards. And we can see Ripple is right here. Ripple is also partnered with ISO approved solution providers, the biggest of which are Finastra and also FIS Global. So XRP here is positioned really well to capture the payment market as Ripple is partnered with large banking solution providers and Ripple themselves is on the ISO 20022 governing body. Next, we have XTC. XTC is also specifically designed for payments and trade finance. XTC is also already being used by a number of emergent players in the space. XTC also has partnerships with a number of ISO approved solution providers, the biggest of which is R3 Corda and also Finastra. The fact that XTC can be used as a settlement token on R3's Corda is just huge. R3 is just a massive company in the space. Next up, we have HBAR. HBAR is not specifically designed for payments, but they already have a number of partnerships where it is being used as a network for stable coins by some very large banks already. You can see here Shinhan Bank, Standard Bank, Cathay Bank. HBAR is also partnered with IBM, who is an ISO approved solution provider. IBM actually sits on the governing body of the HBAR council here, and they're essentially using HBAR as a consensus service for their Hyperledger Fabric framework. We also have Wipro, a large consultancy firm who is on the governing body. Wipro themselves are partnered with a number of ISO approved solution providers, which give HBAR more channels to be implemented for ISO compliant crypto solutions for banks. So the payment market here is huge. It's 44.4% of all SWIFT related messages. So even capturing a small segment of this market 
would result in huge demand for these three cryptos. Next, let's move to the securities market. First here, we have Link. Chainlink is partnered with Swift, and so far they've completed a successful proof of concept and have plans to develop this tech further. Chainlink is also involved in the securities market through real world asset tokenization, where Chainlink's oracles bring data on real world assets on chain, effectively enabling the tokenization of securities. I've also collaborated with the DTCC and as well as the Australia and New Zealand Banking Group. Now I've not mentioned all of Link's partners here, so please don't get upset, but I think the fact that it is partnered with Swift says it all really. Next we have HBAR again. HBAR has a number of partnerships with large institutions relating to tokenization. We can see here with Aberdeen, Standard Bank, DLA Piper. HBAR is already being used here by Aberdeen. And we can see that 15 billion pounds of its Lux Sterling money market fund was tokenized on Hedera Hashgraph. We also can see that DLA Piper has launched a whole new tokenization platform called Toco, which is built on Hedera Hashgraph. And of course, we know that HBAR is partnered with IBM and YPRO. Both are able to implement HBAR in an ISO compliant way. So for this fact, Link and HBAR are both well positioned to capture the securities market. Now the securities market is 50.8%. This is a huge market. So even capturing a small share of this market would result in huge demand for Link and HBAR. So next we have the treasury market here. Now, let me briefly explain what the treasury market is. So treasury management is just simply keeping track of the company's own money and deciding where to keep it, spend it, and ensuring there's money at all times for their needs on an ongoing basis. So things like liquidity, risk management, transparency. The larger the organization is, the more important treasury management is. So just think of big banks, big companies, and governments. So the whole reason why XRP is on here is because of a specific Ripple product, which essentially helps organizations manage their liquidity. It basically removes the need for organizations to hold large amounts of liquidity in pre-funded accounts, and this is especially useful in the whole correspondent banking system. We know that Ripple is partnered with Finastra, FIS, Temenos, Volanti, Fiorano here. I won't go through each of them again, but they are positioned well here. Next up, we have Quant. Quant is on here because they are in active pilots with governments around CBDCs. This is basically helping governments implementing infrastructure to improve transparency and control its currency via CBDCs. They do this with their product called the Overledger platform, which is not really a blockchain, but it's an operating system that helps manage money, which so happens to have blockchain enabled capabilities. We know that Quant is partnered with Oracle here, which needs no introduction. They are an ISO approved solution provider and also Nexi. Nexi is basically the Swift of Europe. They are the largest pay tech provider in Europe. This gives them connections to other ISO approved providers, which we have found on the Swift website. These are companies like ACI Worldwide and Intercope. So both XRP and Quant here have been actively used in solutions in the treasury market, and both are positioned well here. Now the treasury market only constitutes 4.4% of total SWIFT messages, but each message here is absolutely critical as it involves the largest institutions. So what I'm saying here is that even though there are less treasury related messages, each message may carry more average value on a relative basis. There also doesn't seem to be as many competitors in the treasury market compared to payments and securities. 
So the fact that XRP and Quant have a solution here means that they possibly might have an easier time fighting other competitors to get adoption. Next in the trade finance market, we have XTC again. We know that XTC is specifically designed for trade finance. The story of XTC starts with TradeFinex, a platform for trade finance, where one of the founders saw that there was a need for a more efficient and transparent system. He then went off and founded XTC as that system. XTC was one of the first blockchains to be onboarded on the Trade Finance Distribution Initiative, which is just a massive initiative of some of the largest companies relating to trade finance. And interestingly, Andre Kasterman, the CEO of this initiative, he is also a senior advisor to XTC. Now, while the trade finance market is relatively small compared to the other markets here, the advantage for XTC here is that it is only one of the few networks specifically focused on trade finance, which gives it a unique edge against competitors, meaning it has a higher relative chance of being adopted here. And finally, we have the system message market here. Let's quickly go through what system messages actually are. So system messages are just a category of messages used to exchange information between SWIFT and the financial institutions themselves, rather than between the FIs and banks, or between banks and banks. So we know Link has been partnered with SWIFT here back in 2022. They're basically giving banks a single point of access to blockchains to read and post data to multiple blockchains at once. In my mind, this fits the system message category. We also have Quant here. Quant is basically almost doing the same thing. The main difference between Link and Quant here is that Quant is managing the flows of money where Link is bringing on-chain data into the system. We know that the system message category is just 0.2% here of the overall market. However, these messages are still critical to the operation of the whole network. Optimizing any of these messages has a significant impact on the entire Swift network. All right, so thanks for making it all the way to the end. If you watch all of that, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Now, let me just summarize all this here. So the problem that banks are having is that they actually need to transform digitally to become more cost efficient and manage risks. One way of doing this is crypto. Crypto can save up to 80% of operational costs. The best cryptos that are currently positioned to do this are XRP, XTC, HBAR, Link, and Quant. They are all partnered with ISO approved solution providers and have relatively mature solutions already being used in the market. Okay, so that's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Um, yeah, thanks for jumping on again and catching my content. If you have any comments, suggestions, or you know, whatever you want to tell me something, just put it in the comments below or just send me a message. Um, yeah, appreciate you and yeah, I'll catch you next time.